Hi everybody and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today we're going to talk about when you keep thinking about an ex, which is something that is really common. People have written into my blog about it um, and say I'm married but I keep fantasizing about my ex. I keep having dreams about my ex, blah, blah. So a uh, very common thing and before we get to that, uh, please do subscribe. My most recent subscriber episode was on why all your wife's friends also have bad sex lives. And uh, she's not just making that shit up to troll you. It is accurate from her perspective, and here's why. And the next one will also be a subscriber episode, I am sure. Don't know what it is yet. I have to see which way the wind blows me um, that morning. And then I will do something wonderful, I'm sure. Something just transcendental. Okay, so why do people think about exes? Well, here's the number one, which of course you're hoping I don't say, but it's because you're not happy. I mean, it's because you're not happy in some aspect of your marriage. And while your ex may not be perfect, and that's why he's an ex or she's an ex, they represent something that your spouse does not give you. So for example, women who are married to less emotional men uh, dream uh, and think about more emotional exes, the guy who is really romantic. Uh, Men who are in low sex marriages certainly think about and quote, put think in quotes, they just think, they, they, they also fantasize about the uh, earlier experiences in their life with exes who had been more sexually open and adventurous. This just makes sense. So the number one thing to think about if your ex is on your mind all the time is what do they represent that you're not getting from your relationship and then how can you work on that in your relationship if possible, right? So if you um, end up with a better sex life with your wife, you fantasize less about your sex with your ex. I mean, you just do. That's just the truth. And and people are, are very... Um, you know, responsive to changes. So if, if, for example, a woman was with her husband and he's like such a low romance guy and it's just like so awful to her, every holiday comes and he just kind of doesn't even do anything and he isn't really a big talker. And if that guy in couples counseling learns to be more romantic and get her flowers and write her cards and all this shit that I get up guys' asses to do for their wives when they're in couples counseling with me, then Frequently, she's happier, you know, she stops thinking about the ex and she goes back to thinking about the ex objectively, like, oh, yeah, he was really romantic, but yeah, he was also like unemployed. Oh, yeah, yeah, that part wouldn't be fun, you know, and he did have a drug problem. Yep, that's true. And so she goes back to thinking about him like that and the guys because, um, you know, like the the hotter Uh, sexier women that are crazy in bed are also crazy out of bed and they go back to remembering that too you know if they were to be working on their sex life more with their wife then you know they're like oh yeah she acted like a porn star in bed and you know like she she like was like I remember you know she told me she did have that history of getting paid for sex yeah I wouldn't have liked that you know thing also like she lit my stuff on fire that one time when she was upset with me so you know etc so people start to see their ex as much more objective if they work on the marriage. What else could it mean that you're thinking about your ex all the time? Well, the most likely culprit, if it is not that you are openly dissatisfied with your marriage or covertly dissatisfied with your marriage, is that you yearn for that time in your life. You have a lot of nostalgia for that time in your life. That was the last time that you felt really young and carefree usually. And therefore, you know, that's a time that you wish was back. And while you love your children and everybody loves their children, et cetera, you know, then you just uh, wish that you were 25 again or whatever, 30 or 19 or whatever the case may be. When you're feeling particularly trapped and uh, like life is drudgery, which is just sometimes part of life at different stages, then you can find yourself fantasizing about times where your friend felt free and liberated and like you didn't have a care in the world and whoever you were with at that time is what you're going to think about. You're just going to think about that person because they were there with you during that time. What is there to do about that? I mean, you could work on like how your life is structured. You could work on why you are so currently kind of dissatisfied and is there anything that you could do to make you yourself feel less trapped and less kind of, you know, bored and and what have you.
you know, because you don't want to necessarily just pin it on your relationship. You know, there's a lot of women, for example, that, you know, have new babies and they feel completely tied to the baby. And that's great in one hand, on one hand, but on the other hand, it's super hard. And so they start dreaming about their ex from college when all they had to do was like get up and go to class sometimes, you know, and they weren't tethered to another being that they have to keep alive. That's totally understandable, obviously, based on where those women are in their lives. You know, and men think about it too. Oh, I remember my ex from, you know, before I even had to get up and go to work all the time. You know, and that person takes on this like fantasy rarefied air, you know, of greatness because that was a great time, at least compared to the current time. People that tend to have like a lot of nostalgia for the past, you know, this goes along with being a highly sensitive person and also being kind of a depressive person, you know, because this isn't really a good thing usually to have like excessive, like, you know, like thoughts about how great it used to be compared to now romantic nostalgia you know unsurprisingly about your current partner is linked to increased marital satisfaction in research so for example thinking oh it was so great at the beginning when we dated oh do you remember you know the first trip that we took oh do you remember when our kids were this age that kind of stuff makes people feel closer it's done with the current partner though so when you're constantly having romantic nostalgia about other people and about other iterations of yourself and like it's always you're like doing downward comparisons that usually comes from hearing the same kind of thing done when you were growing up so a lot of parents have these like depressive parents have these super wistful stories that particularly highly sensitive kids respond to very poorly they feel so bad for the parent all of the parents stories are about how great things used to be like in comparison to now and the kid just feels like kind of like shit all the time for the parent feels like maybe the parent shouldn't even have had kids or got married and they feel so bad for the younger version of the parent who like then turned into this like sad you know person and this is very very common when a parent is depressed and they don't have good boundaries you know so they're talking and confessing fighting and in particularly the oldest child or the only child whoever the confidant is or the child that shares their gender and they're like talking over and over about how good things used to be if you grew up in that kind of environment you may not even have made the connection till this minute but if you grew up hearing a lot of stories like that then it it predisposes you to do the same kind of thing and to you know engage too much in thinking about the highlight reel of your own life you likely in this generation do not share the those um, musings with your child, but they're still there in the back of your head. And therapy can really help because if you grew up like that, then that's probably why you're doing it now. And then the ex that was there at the time turns into this, you know, pinnacle of who you want to be with, even though like they were probably really fucking annoying. And that brings me to the next point, which is they are just a person. As I say to guys all the time, like the girl who is having crazy sex with you in college is not giving blowjobs like three times a week to her now husband. You know, she's just really not. Like she has her own kids. Like look her up, you know, like she's just a regular middle-aged woman now. And I'm sure she has a little more sex than your wife does, but you know what? It wouldn't move the needle. And uh, for you, had you married her and there were downsides to her and, you know, do not put this person on a pedestal. And I say to women too, don't put that guy on a pedestal because he's just some dude now. And do you remember like how he used to act like kind of annoying and self-involved or like whatever, whatever? Well, he's doing that shit now and some woman is sick of it. Now, I always pride myself on being honest with you guys, not just blowing smoke up your asses. So are there cases when, in fact, you are thinking about your ex because you ought to be with your ex? Well, I mean, yeah, people do tell me these stories. You know, there's people who get back with their ex. There's people who reconnect with their ex um, and have an affair with them and then happily remarry them and believe that they always should have been with that person. I have clients whose parents have done shit like that. You know, like they they remet their high school sweetheart and then they got married happily and lived happily ever after. Sometimes it's after they were divorced or widowed, but sometimes it's when they were still married. You know, and only you know if this is the case, but you would really, really owe it to yourself, your family, and your current partner to explore the shit out of that, you know, to the point that you're like boring yourself in therapy um, to see if your ex is really somebody who you, who is like, you know, the person you never should have broken up with. And I mean, then your story will be a little different, right? Your story will be something like, 
he went away to the military and I got pregnant with another man's baby, you know, like some shit like that versus like, yeah, we consistently had really big fights because our personalities clashed, but we did have good sex. And that's why I think that we would be a good match now. No, 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 that wouldn't be smart, you know, but if it is kind of this like situation where parents didn't let you date or like, you know, this crazy thing where you, you were totally fine until like, you know, external circumstances tore you apart. It's really hard to convince people in that case that it wouldn't have been better with this ex, you know? And sometimes they leave for the ex. Sometimes they do. And is that always a bad decision? Uh, it's the individual person. It's certainly, you know, not really nice to your current partner, but, you know, there's situations where... It, it is kind of funny, you know, because if you think about it, everybody's like, oh, yeah, you should definitely divorce if you're not in love, you know, but then the minute that you say you're not in love because you're in love with this dude from like, you know, 20 years ago or something, everybody's like, oh, you know, you're such a terrible person. Is it really any different? I mean, I don't know if it's really very different. The difference would be if you start sleeping with the person, you know, don't start sleeping with anybody while you're married. I mean, I just talked about infidelity in my prior podcast. So, I mean, I do not think that that is a good idea. But if people are constantly comparing a better relationship with an ex who they know is currently available, then, I mean, really it's anybody's guess kind of what to do, whether they should stay in their marriage or not. Many people are just not in love with their partner, you know? And and some a small subset of those people, it's because they're in love with somebody else. A larger subset, it's because they never saw a loving marriage. And that's the kind of people that I'm talking to in this podcast frequently are people who saw dysfunctional relationships growing up and then they're taking them forward into their current relationship. And thus it's difficult for them to truly be in love, et cetera, et cetera. But some of those people, a rare subset, small subset, truly did get along quite a lot better with an ex, never realized it, etc. So in that place of, of being in that place, it's hard to know really what to do. And that, and I've actually worked with loads of people in this situation over the years because it is a very difficult situation to figure out on your own. So therapy would definitely be something that I would recommend, probably more than usual, because you can't just go to like your friends and be like, you know what, I'm still thinking about my ex because they have to hang out with your current partner at like barbecues and stuff. It's like fucking things humiliating, it's confusing, you know, so this is the sort of situation where you maybe want to get an outside perspective. But uh, are there any other reasons that people fantasize about exes? Well, I mean, for many uh, people, that was your only other sexual partner. Pretty much you had like only a few. Average is four point something for women and six point something sexual partners for men. So if you're ovulating or if you're like, you know, turned on, that's like in your mental, you know, list. So, I mean, you don't have to take it for more than that. Like, it's just literally something that you remember. You remember having sex with this person. Also, this I'd be remiss if I did not add that sometimes your ex was just better in bed. You know, so if you're having sex dreams about your ex because they're better in bed, then why don't you try to teach some of that shit to your current partner? A lot of people, it's just like they, they view their partner's sexual experience like the weather. It's like, oh, is it sunny today? Is it raining today? I guess I'll take an umbrella. Nothing I can do. There is something you could do. You could teach your partner how to be better in bed. I talk about this all the time. I have a podcast like... Make yourself open to sexual feedback from your wife or like don't fake orgasms or, you know, like how to, you know, female arousal. I have ones where I try to directly teach you stuff to do instead, oral sex on women, oral sex on men. Um, you know, I mean, you can you can teach your partner to be better if really the whole deal is that your ex was literally just better in bed then don't let the don't let it die on the vine with your current partner because you just view them as just worse like they can learn just like they learn other things will they ever be like a total natural like your ex well maybe your ex wasn't a total natural either but you just had the hormones you know of a young fertile mammal and you were like ready to screw anything and so you just kind of imprinted on your ex's sexual style like a duckling and, you know, imprints on whatever it sees walking, like, you know, those funny videos where it sees like a toy train and then there's all these ducklings walking after that. But, you know, that's like what a lot of people do is their first, they, they think that they, quote, like certain sexual things like out of the ether. But in reality, they just got used to what their first partner did. 
you know, and when you think about it like that, that it's a learned behavior, then it's a hell of a lot easier to understand why you should train your current partner and that it is in fact possible to train a partner to be different in bed because look, you learn to like what you learn to like because of your early experiences, not because of anything transcendental, you know, about that person. Um, you know, and that, that is the truth. So, I mean, that in and of itself is worth the price of admission of this free podcast um, to get that, that info, which is a different way to look at it that helps a lot of people. All right, so I hope that you guys found this very fascinating as usual. Please do subscribe to get uh, over 128 subscriber episodes, I think. And do join the Facebook group, which is a really fun place where a lot of smart and funny people like to talk about topics related to my podcast, relationships, sex, uh, career, parenting, marriage, divorce, whatever. All right, great. Have a great day, guys. Talk to you soon.